This is a CBS News special report. I'm Major Garrett in Washington. We're coming on the air with breaking news. The House of Representatives has, after three weeks of legislative paralysis, elected a new speaker of the House of Representatives. His name, Mike Johnson of Louisiana. Representative Johnson has secured the votes needed for victory. This happened just moments ago. He will replace Kevin McCarthy, who was removed as speaker three weeks ago after being targeted by Florida Republican Matt Gates and others in the Republican conference. Johnson, age 51, became the Republicans' Correa. fourth nominee for the speaker late last night after Tom Emmer of Minnesota Correa. withdrew after opposition from right-wing Republicans influenced by former President Donald Trump. Gallego. One of the reasons that that opposition arose to Emmer was he voted to certify the 2020 election. Representative Steve Scalise and Jim Jordan also withdrew in recent days in their bids to become speaker because they could not secure enough votes to win in the House Republican Conference. Congressional correspondent Scott McFarlane is on Capitol Hill. Scott, history may record this as the consensus of the exhausted. Republicans have been through this over and over and over again, and now they've landed on a new speaker. What can you tell our audience? about Mike Johnson of the 4th District of Louisiana. He's in his fourth term, a former talk radio host, a lower-ranking member of House Republican leadership, and as of 24 hours ago, not even a top vote-getter inside his own Republican conference to be the nominee. Mike Johnson, as you said, also voted to decertify the 2020 election won by Joe Biden. The person who was the nominee as of this time yesterday, Tom Emmer, voted to certify that election, but the conference has pivoted to Mike Johnson, who just ran the table inside a fractious Republican conference, which right now has been defined by bad blood amassed over the past three weeks. You watched history. I mean, this has never happened before. A speaker has never been voted out by his own party. That's what happened three weeks ago with Kevin McCarthy. And you saw them come together on a series of nominees between then and now. Steve Scalise, the majority leader, tried it, didn't get the votes. Jim Jordan, the judiciary chair from Ohio, went to the floor three times, couldn't get the votes. Tom Emmer had the nomination for four hours and bailed out, couldn't get the votes. Mike Johnson just now got the necessary votes, swept his own party. This typically happens so once every two years, Major. It's happened nearly 20 times this year, and it has concluded. We'll give you our audience a little bit more on Mike Johnson of Louisiana. Let's look at some of the aspects of his most recent voting record. You can see there he voted against, as Scott McFarland just said, certifying the 2020 presidential election. He voted against legalizing same-sex marriage. He voted against a Ukraine aid package in May of this year, opposed the most recent continuing resolution in September to keep the government opening, and he was part of the legal team that defended former President Trump in the first impeachment hearing and trial in the Senate about issues related to Ukraine. I want to bring in CBS News chief election and campaign correspondent Robert Costa. Robert, he, that is to say, Mike Johnson has never been a committee chairman. He's never been a subcommittee chairman. He is a backbencher for a House Republican conference that quite clearly and evidently wants a backbencher, someone who is less experienced than those who sought the position and could not secure the votes to hold it. That's exactly right, Major. And to really understand why Mike Johnson of Louisiana, this Republican most people in the country didn't know about a few minutes ago, is now Speaker of the House in the line of succession to the presidency. Let's look at a picture from last night of Congressman Johnson, now Speaker Johnson, surrounded by his colleagues, because he. this picture really tells you about why Johnson got this role. See, to behind Johnson is Elise Stefanik, the conference chair. You have Steve Scalise over his shoulder as well, the majority leader. They're the leadership. But who do you see tightly packed around him? The backbenchers, as Major Garrett just said. It's the backbenchers who elevated him. Those congressmen who, and, and women who you don't know about. They're looking for someone to break up the leadership, someone new to come in, and someone who echoes former President Trump's politics in many ways. And this is someone who hosts a podcast, that where he talks about his Christian evangelical values with many members of Congress. The he's well-known inside the House, not outside the House. And he's someone who's kept a low profile on television, but he's well-known as almost a conservative figure rising through the policy ranks in the House. So he has that foundation of relationships, even if he doesn't have the political capital, which is going to be very important, as you know, Major, facing him right now, real challenges, yes. how to fund support for Ukraine and Israel, as well as government funding. 
And just for our audience's benefit, Robert, you know this well, I want you to help them walk through this. He will be the speaker at the top, the apex of power in the House of Representatives. But all the other Republican superstructure remains. Steve Scalise will still be the majority leader. Tom Epper will still be the House Majority Whip. The chair appoints the poll. Meaning those people who sought this position will now be beneath him and they will have to offer their support, their guidance, their floor capabilities their legislative capabilities to this newly minted speaker. So he will be reliant, that is to say, Mike Johnson, on people he's just bested for this coveted position. And we will see if they can keep a united front, because you now have a new speaker who believes, certainly based on my conversations with his colleagues over the past 24 hours, that he does have power now, and he wants to use it. Speaker Johnson's already issuing his own letters about his agenda in terms of how he wants to handle appropriations. It's not necessarily the agenda of Majority Leader Scalise, though Scalise being from Louisiana as well and a mentor is certainly going to be a right hand to this new speaker. So will Tom Emmer, the Majority Whip. But what's going to be intriguing to watch and important for the country is how does he handle spending on all of these crucial fronts. This is someone who comes out of the House of Representatives' flank that's anti-spending, that wants to restrict abortion rights, that wants to restrict the size of government. And this is someone who is not just kind of a conservative, he's a deep conservative on social issues, cultural issues, economic issues. So you have right now in the United States someone with an ideology from the right wing of the Republican Party assuming the speakership of the House. Republicans have described this three-week period as chaotic, a bad look, and now they have a speaker, which means they are a legislatively re-energized body, which means they can now engage with the White House. So I want to go to our senior White House correspondent, Weijia Jang, who joins us. Weijia, what's the perspective on this development from the White House? Well, Major, the White House and President Biden have been very careful not to talk about any potential candidates who may become the Speaker of the House, because that wouldn't be in the President's best interest, because he has to work with whoever it is. And in this case, it will be a bit awkward, because as you've been talking about, Congressman Johnson led the charge in the efforts to try to overturn the election that Joe Biden won back in 2020. But they have talked about the urgent need to fill this void because uh, right now President Biden is at the center of the world when it comes to the U.S. foreign policy. And he has been trying to convey that America is back, that allies can count on America, and that America is a leader for all democracies. But at the same time, you have this split screen of the dysfunction of Congress. And it's really fitting and really pretty remarkable timing, Major, that he's actually starting a press conference at this moment with the Prime Minister of Australia, who is here to talk about the security challenges in the Indo-Pacific. And so that prime minister has goals, too, uh, namely to get a, a submarine transfer that requires congressional approval. So all of this major to say that, yes, this is a requirement for the president to move his legislative agenda forward. So there will be relief here at the White House that the Republicans were able to elect someone, even if it is not uh, whoever the president was hoping it would be, although he never publicly said one way or another, Major. There are busy days in Washington. Washington, but this is a particularly busy day, and as Ouija just mentioned, there is a split-screen effect worth taking note of. The House of Representatives now pro pro propelling itself toward swearing in a new speaker. Meanwhile, just down Pennsylvania Avenue and the Rose Garden of the White House, President Biden with the Australian Prime Minister. Ouija, I want to ask you, has the president said anything in his opening remarks or an engagement with reporters new about the situation in Israel? Yes, Major. He actually started uh, not by talking about the prime minister's visit, but by talking about their united support of Israel. And he reiterated once again Israel's right and obligation to defend itself, but then immediately said um, that Hamas is not 
the same should not be equated with the civilians in Gaza, which is a point that he has in recent days especially been trying to hit home as he tries to free up more humanitarian aid into that region. He said that he has spoken with leaders in the region about the need uh, for more aid and that he um, wants this crisis to be over. He has a vision of what's next, and I imagine he will be pressed major about what that could look like, uh, because that's one outstanding question of what Gaza will look like in a post-war world. But right now, he is recommitting, again, the U.S.'s support of Israel and its right to defend itself. Major. We, we Jang on the North Lawn of the White House. I want to go back very quickly to Scott McFarland on Capitol Hill. Scott, explain to our audience what's happening now, what will transpire in the next couple of minutes or so, and what the House, now that it is reconstituted as a functioning leg legislative body, will start to work on in the not too distant future. Two big things. The House has been itching for weeks to formally pass a resolution to denounce the attack on Israel. They couldn't while they were paralyzed. They may do that as a first order of business. But major, they've also got to decide on Ukraine funding. House Republicans are bitterly divided on whether to continue spending money on that. Mike Johnson has to unify his party one way or the other, whether to spend billions on Ukraine. Unified now, we'll see how long that lasts. We expect this new Speaker of the House to be sworn in shortly. That's a formality. That will happen. And later today, Speaker Johnson will hold his first press conference. Our coverage of all that will continue on CBS News Streaming. You can find it on your local news, of course, later tonight and tonight on CBS Evening News. This has been a special report. I'm Major Garrett in Washington. Good day.